So <coughs> the topic for today is fungal infections, diabetic foot. So any infection involving the foot with a patient who has a diabetic, has a chronic injury or so injury of the soft tissue, can have neuropathic or ischemic uh, diabetic uh, foot and that can convert into diabetic foot ulcers. Over 415 million people are with uh, chronic diabetes and they may rise above 640 million by 2040. So ulcers are one of the most common complications of uh, people who have diabetes. So a person with <coughs> diabetes uh, has a lifetime risk of developing a foot ulcer by 25%. And every uh, 20 seconds in the world uh, statistics, patients are getting amputated of the lower limb because of the foot ulcers. So diabetic foot ulcers extend, uh, uh, that extend to the bone are the main cause of lower extremity amputations. And they are at increased risk of mor uh, mortality and morbidity with the high cost burdens. So the uh, epidemiology is uh, that from the North India, one third of the patients with diabetes prevalent are having peripheral neuropathy. Two third of these patients were at risk of ulcers and 9% of these papers, uh, people are prevalent ulcers out of which 20% requires amputation. The prevalence of diabetic foot infections is estimated to be 6 to 11 percent and the neuropathy is considered to be the most important determinant for the occurrence of the infections of the diabetic foot infections. The diabetic foot infections uh, may include infective ulcerations known as malperformance, paronychia, cellulitis, myositis, abscesses, necrotizing fasciitis, septic arthritis and tendonitis. How to identify the risk of diabetic foot infection? Uh, history of 10 years or more of diabetes, previous foot ulcers, or ex, uh, lower extremity amputation, poor glycemic control, impaired vision, and some structural abnormalities of the foot like calluses, hammer, claw toes, flat foots, and biunions. The pathogenesis most likely involved of the chronic ulcer is peripheral neuropathy, art peripheral arterial disease. It can be both and the low immune system. Coming to diabetic neuropathy, long-standing diabetes can cause the nerve damage in the form of tingling sensation, pricks and needles, burning sensations, numbness, increased sensitivity <coughs> that may be increased by the risk of cuts, sores or blisters. So if prompt treatment uh, is not given for the infection, they may lead to ulcers and even gangrene. Peripheral vascular disease uh, is because of diabetes that uh, leads to the change in the blood vessels, including the arteries in the peripheral vascular disease. The treatment usually affects the blood vessels in the extremities of the hands and the feet and lowering the blood flow. The poor blood circulation can lead to pain, uh, infection, and wounds will heal very slow. The symptoms, again, may be blisters, loss of sensation, numbness, red streaks, with or without draining, painful tingling sensation. If the infection in the person is developed, then uh, he or she may have fever with high blood sugar, trembling, shock, and redness. So the neuropathy and the peripheral vascular disease are a severe condition that need proper medical care and follow-up because both will cause foot ulcers, infection of the screen, skin, bone, and abscesses, gangrene, and foot deformity. Charcot foot is the shape of the foot that is altered due to the breaking of the bones inside the foot or the shift of the toe, foot, uh, toe is shifted. This is the Wagner's classification for diabetic foot ulcers where the grade zero has no ulcers, grade one involves the superficial skin only, Deep ulcers is grade two. Grade three is having deep ulcer with cellulitis or abscess. Grade four is localized gangrene and extensive gangrene with the whole foot is grade five. So DF <coughs> diabetic foot ulcers are the combination of predisposing uh, risk factors like uh, the uh, sustained hyperglycemia in a normal foot can cause to abnormal immunity leading to angiopathy, micro and macro angiopathic systems that will lead to ischemia and edema. Uh, other can be triggering factors of instrencing and extrinsic type, motor, sensitive, and autonomic neuropathies. They all lead to diabetic foot ulcers and aggravating factors like previously non-healed infections that can also lead to diabetic foot ulcers. In real-world studies, approximately 15% of all the infections are caused by fungi, and invasive fungal infections are increasingly day-to-day -day that may cause sepsis in uncontrolled diabetic patients, and patients may lay... Uh, <coughs> may finally land into the as a critically ill patient in ICUs. These are the symptoms of the fungal infection, irritation, scaly skin, swelling, blisters, and uh, it could be because of mild, yeast, tinea. The stages of the fungal infection could be three, the areas of small uh, redness and cracks at stage one, skin of the uh, foot or toe begins to peel off stage two, 
and there is a separation of the skin uh, that is visible from the wound and this is stage 3. So tinea pedis and oncosis are the two major fungal infections of the foot. So within the general population, tinea pedis, they are uh, coexist and 15 to 20 percent of the incidences are happened in diabetes. These infections disrupt the skin's integrity and provide an avenue for the bacterial super infection in elderly diabetic patients with dermatophytic infections that can be promptly treated with an antifungal agent. Coming to tinea pedis, it can be of four types, trichophyton drubrum, interdigitali, epidermophyton folluscum, and microscopum. So the fungal infection can contribute to the development of the pathogenesis of ulceration in cellulitis in diabetic foot in a number of ways. It could be because of com complication due to infections in an already dry foot or autonomic dysfunction. In the, <coughs> in the cases of loss of protective sensation associated with diabetic neuropathy, they may result in the fungal infection. The patient will be unaware of that infection. Because of peripheral arterial disease and vascular insufficiency, they reduce the tissue viability and protection of the damage. Uh, these could be the fungal infections that can be present, tinea capitis, fasciae, barbarae, corporis, manum, ungum, curis, and pedis. Coming to oncomycosis, thickening of the nails as a result of oncomycosis may result in the sub, uh, increase in the subingual pressure and the subsequent ulceration, and the nail begins to break on the epidermal surfaces, and uh, they dig into the uh, skin and the irritating uh, toes, creating ulcerations. Candida is one of the commonest infection of the fungus that is present. It contributes almost 5% of all those uh, cases of sepsis. Candida accounts for 70 to 90% of the invasive fungal infections, and aspergillosis almost 10 to 20%. Candida is commonly found in throat, gut, vagina, in healthy individuals, but Candida yeast can be uh, the cause of infection in the compromised immune systems like diabetes. Candida is emerging serious global health, threat for not only being difficult to treat but also difficult to identify. There have been some studies in India like in Bhuvneshwar where the primary objective was to find out that why the uh, uh, <coughs> diabetic foot ulcers are getting infected and the secondary objective was to detection of the fungus. In this slide, you can see that majority of the uh, fungal infections contri are contributed to Candida species, and uh, second is Trichophyton species. There is another study uh, that has also demonstrated that Candida albicans should be at the top of the table, fo followed by Candida glabrata and Candida uh, tropicalis. So the relationship between the fungal infection of the feet and the cellulitis of the low extremities in the people depends on the type of the uh, infection and how bad the cellulitis or the infection is. A study was done with 243 cases of cellulitis and 467 control subjects, and they were find that their infection rate was significantly higher with cellulitis than in controls. Another study of 100 patients were done with mycosis of the foot with 200 controls, and analysis of the fungal culture demonstrated a positive relationship between dermatophyte infection and cellulitis. Literature also signifies almost the same syndromes. IDSA guidelines uh, uh, given in 2004, 7, and 12 had say, uh, said about uh, uninfected, mild, moderate, and severe infections associated with uh, these uh, problems and fungals. So management of the fungal infection of the diabetic foot involves these four, five majority of things. Maintaining a good foot hygiene, so you have to wash your feet daily, dry, especially between the toes. Feel for any bumps or temperature changes. Look for the toes and check each toenail. Each toenail should be straight, and uh, there should not be any cracked skin examining the bottom of the feet. Crack whatever you find. These are <coughs> some of the emollients that are usually prescribed, chlorotrimazole, tamivirafen, in the oral form or maybe in the ointment form. Shoes. It should be very important to wear shoes because you are working all throughout the day, and the shoes are the most important part of your diabetic foot. The shoes should be without heels or narrow toes. Shoes should uh, keep your feet dry, and should, uh, old shoes should be replaced as soon as possible. Socks. When in the communal areas, individuals should avoid direct contact with the floor by wearing flip-flops and never wear the other people's shoes. So the benefits of dry, uh, diabetic socks are that they prevent dry feet, reduces the infection, reduces the pressure, reduces the irritation, and have, gives a better circulation to your feet. Stop putting your feet in a germ, 
<coughs> felt stinky shoes, so you can dis disinfect, and that these type of dis disinfectant modules are available in the market to disinfect your shoes. Blood sugar control is very important. Whatever you do, if your sugars are not controlled, your uh, fungal infection won't go away. So vigilance in managing the blood sugar can prevent the whole lot of complications that will go well uh, beyond the fungi. These are the general measures. Keep your feet dry. Try, try to kill the fungus. Avoid yeast infections. That begins with the balanced diet and proper hygiene. Avoid sharing the items like towels, sports equipments. Wear breathable fabrics. Athlete food often gives the, uh, can be treated by topical uh, antifungal ointments. And severe infections can require oral medications also. This is the anti, uh, specific treatment. Dermatophyte infection uh, needs tabinafin. One person can be applied to uh, once or twice daily for the skin and for the nail. Uh, it's required in oral dose of 250 milligrams once daily for three to six months. For nail infection or non-dermatophyte molds, oral itraconazole therapy is required as a pulse therapy. So people are majorly resistant to the treatment or there is a role of polypharmacy that makes it difficult to get, maintain a good foot hygiene and to remove the fungal infections. These are the different types of fungal infection, uh, fungal treatments that are available in the form of azoles and uh, amphotericin B. Newer treatment option is ozone, which is used as an antimicrobial, antibacterial, and antifungal purposes. Amputation due to fungal infections is uh, supported in the literature. Uh, this is one clinical case scenario in which patient was uh, got a, a patient was a diabetic HbA1c 8.3 and got an ulceration of the first and second row. Culture sensitivity has short staff. Audience was sensitive to flu coxuslin. Two weeks of the course was given four times a day, for, uh, settled, but uh, things reoccurred. The patient again came, and the screen scrappings was seen, uh, was sent, and in conjunction to flu, uh, flu coxuslin, fluconazole once daily was also started. After two weeks, flu coxuslin was discontinued, but due to ongoing interdigital irritation, the fluconazole was continued. So when to seek the medical help? Color changes on the foot, swelling on the foot, temperature changes in the foot, constant sores in the foot, pain on tingling sensation in, on the, in the ankles, in the growing toenails, athlete foot or any fungal infections, dry or cracked skin, or any sign of infection you see. So you must seek a medical help. My final thoughts. Diabetes and its complications never show a way to recovery and until diagnosed and managed early in life. Poor compliance and negligence to anti-diabetic therapy give rise to foot ulcers and fungal infections very soon. Oral anti antibiotics and antifungals are the guidelines directed treatment should be tried first before initiating any intravenous fungal therapy as per the IDSA. See your foot as you see your face in the mirror daily to avoid diabetic foot ulcers. Preventive skin care is vital to your comfort and the long-term health. Keep an eye out of the skin changes and that could indicate the fungal infections. An early intervention can prevent most serious complications. So stay, uh, your, give your feet a happy feet and happy you. Thank you.